Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield. Welcome to Building San Francisco. We're doing a special series, Stay Safe, about how you can stay in your home after an earthquake comfortably and safely. We know an earthquake is coming and there are many things you can do to reduce the impacts of that earthquake on your home. Let's take a look at them. We're here at the Spur Urban Center on Mission Street in San Francisco talking about staying in your home after an earthquake. Um, I have guests today, Pat Buskovich and his dog Harvey, hi, and David Bonowitz, both structural engineers. And we want to talk about things that you might do before an earthquake to your home to make it more likely that your home will be habitable in, after an earthquake. What should we do? Both structural things and maybe even important non-structural things. David, what do you think? Well, you hear a lot about how to prepare an earthquake kit, how to brace your bookshelves, brace your water heater, that uh, water tank. That's really important. What you have to be careful about a little bit is make sure you're not just doing the easy things to make yourself feel better so you don't get into the whole deck chairs and the Titanic thing. If you have a bad structure, a bad building, then you really need to be looking at that and everything you do to you know, keep your collectibles in place is small compared. If you've taken care of your structure, then there's a lot of good stuff you can do in your house that's non-structural, your chimney, your water tank, that's where I'd start. So let's talk about what those structural things might be. Pat, what would you and, think? And he's exactly right. You, you don't want to make the deck chair safe on the Titanic. If the Titanic's going down, you're going down. You got to make sure your house is safe. There's some basic things you need to do. Uh, including bracing the water heater, not just because of the fire hazard, because of the water source and the damage, but basic things are installing anchor bolts, adding plywood, um, strapping your beams to columns and posts to uh, footings to foundations are really easy things to do. Most contractors can do. The building department is set up to approve this work. And these are things every homeowner should do. It's a little harder because you have to get a building permit, you have to hire a contractor, but you want to be able to, after a big earthquake, to climb in bed that night, pull the covers up and say, I don't have to worry about going to government shelter. That's really the, the, the main focus is that it's great to have an earthquake kit to be able to bug out for 72 hours. Here's a better idea, stay in your own home. And in order to do that, you have to make sure the structure is okay. Now, if you have a house, as Pat was talking about, some of those easy things to do with wood construction are, are feasible. If you're a, a renter or you live in a bigger building or a brick building or a concrete building, you need to talk to the building owner and make sure that they've done the, do, their due diligence to check with an engineer and have their building evaluated, find out what those deficiencies are. Now, in the earthquakes that I've looked at damaged buildings, I've often seen that a little investment of time and money in structural work provides great dividends. Has that been your experience? Oh, too, especially David? if it's a, you know, the wood frame typical house where you can do the things Pat was talking about, the anchor bolts and a little bit of plywood in that first uh, garage area. You know, if you refinanced in the last few years, take some of that savings. It's a really good investment. And the other thing I try to tell people, earthquake insurance is not the solution to the shelter in place. If there's a big earthquake and your building's damaged and you may have earthquake insurance, you're not in your house. Right. You may be somewhere else. If you work in the city, it's gonna be really hard to commute from Sonoma. You wanna do what's necessary so that your house is retrofitted. It's a couple years of earthquake premium can get you to a level that you could be in the house after a significant earthquake. It may have damage, but you're still this shelter in place where you're at home, you're not worried for the government taking care of you, you're living in a place where you can go to work. You really wanna have your house, wood frame houses are really easy to get to that level. And on top of the wood frame house, I mean, every wood frame house in the whole west half of the city, they all have a water tank. And when water tanks fall over because they're gas fired, they start fires. And that's something that you can do for, your own, for yourself, for your neighbors, and for the whole city. Make sure your water tank is braced. If you look at the studies now that they're predicting on fires, uh, we're going to have a lot of fires. And for every water tank that's braced, there's a potential one less fire that the fire department's going to have to fight. And we don't want to have any more fires than we need to. So bracing the water heaters is the absolute first thing you want to do. And it's so easy. You just go online, you Google, earthquake water heater, you'll find a dozen different links and sites where you can find uh, typical details. You can print them out right there and do it yourself from the hardware store. They sell kits or uh, hire a small contractor to do that for you. It's, that's a couple of hundred bucks 
best investment. Now, if you're in other types of buildings, it gets a little more complicated. If you're in a high-rise building, uh, you just can't anchor bolt your building down because, quite frankly, there are no anchor bolts. But at that point, the, the tenant should be asking questions of the owners and the managers about earthquake preparedness. And don't, don't take the easy answer, which is, oh, our building is safe, it was designed to code. That's not the right answer. Ask some tough questions, see if you can get a report that's been given to so you. So what is the right question? Am I going to be able to stay in my home after the expected earthquake? And is uh, that a good question to ask? Yeah, that's a pretty good question to ask. You, you may be more specific if you talk to the building owner, especially if it's not a recent building. If it's a building that's more than 10, 20 years old, see if they've had an earthquake evaluation done, say, since Loma Prieta or at Loma Prieta. Right. There you'll have a written report that will tell you all about the structure. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Harvey. Thanks, David, for joining us. And thank you for joining us on Building San Francisco. Stay safe.